the death of Saul. Now the Philistines are fighting against Israel, and the men of Israel had run away from the Philistines and were lying down dead on Mount Gilboa. So sad. And the Philistines overtook Saul and his sons, and the Philistines struck down Jonathan and Abinadab and Malkishua, the sons of Saul. And the battle went against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was badly wounded. And he said to his armor-bearer, Draw your sword, and thrust me through with it, lest these uncircumcised Philistines come and kill me and abuse my body. But his armor-bearer would not, for he feared greatly. So the man who carried Saul's armor was like David. He respected the fact that Saul was the Lord's anointed. And Paul says that he who has anointed us is God. So we also have been anointed by the Spirit. And therefore, we ought to really respect each other. And that respect of each other really ought to be a real characteristic of us all. That we respect each other. And that if someone is a brother or sister in Christ, you respect them very much for that. And you don't treat them in any sort of bad way at all. And you don't reject them. Uh, you accept them. So, even if they're not perfect. That's how David treated Saul. And that's how Saul's armor bearer treated him. So, when the armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell upon his sword and died with him. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer all on the same day together. And when the men of Israel who were on the other side of the valley and on the other side of the river Jordan saw that all the Israelite soldiers had fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they ran away from their towns and the Philistines came and lived in them. The next day when the Philistines came to strip the slain without burning them down. That's right, they just ran away so quickly that the Philistines just came and lived in their houses. Instead of fighting them. Instead of fighting them, that's right. So the Philistines found Saul and his three sons dead on Mount Gilboa. They cut off his head, trying to get him back for what David had done to Goliath. They took his armor off him. Get him back. Well, the Philistines were trying to get the Israelites back for what they, what David had done. He had taken Goliath's armor and cut off Goliath's head. And so I now, thought that you meant that Saul... Get Saul back for what he did. Well, like, they, they sort of well, yes. were getting the Israelites back. And they carried the good news of their victory to their idols. It was so <laughs> dumb that their idols <laughs> needed to be told. They didn't know themselves. They put Saul's armor in the temple of Ashtoreth. Well, doesn't God know what's happening everywhere? Our God does. The one true God knows everything. That's right. But their idols didn't. And they fastened the body of Saul to the wall of Bethshan. But when the men of Jabesh Gilead, these were Israelites, heard what the Philistines had done to Saul, all the brave men arose and journeyed all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Bethshan, and they buried them in Jabesh. And they took their bones and buried them under the tamarisk tree in Jabesh and fasted, that is, they didn't eat for seven days. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from fighting the Amalekites, David was two days in Ziklag, and on the third day a man came to him from Saul's army with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground and bowed to him, and David said to him, Where have you come from? And he said, I have escaped from the army of Israel. David said, How did it go? Tell me. He said, The people ran away in the battle, and many of the people are dead, and Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. And David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan are dead? And the young man said, Well, I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, and there was Saul leaning on his spear, that is, about to uh, kill himself. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I said, Here I am. He said to me, Who are you? I said, I'm an Amalekite. He said, Please kill me, because I don't want to fall into the hands of the Philistines. So I killed him. I was sure he couldn't uh, live after he was so injured. And I took the crown on his head and the armlet, the bracelet that was on his arm, and I've brought them here to you, David. He was lying, this Amalekite. He obviously thought that David would think, Oh, what wonderful news, Saul is dead. Oh, well done, I'm going to reward you. You killed Saul, well done. But instead, David took hold of his clothes and tore them. 
and so did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept until evening for Saul and for Jonathan and for all the Lord's people and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. And David said to this young man who told him, Where, you, where do you come from? And he said, I'm an Amalekite. David said to him, Why weren't you frightened then to put your hand to kill the Lord's anointed? You remember how when David could have, could have killed Saul, he never did. And he found him in the cave, and when he crept into the camp that night, he could have killed Saul, but he didn't. And this man was boasting that he'd killed Saul, even though actually he didn't. David called to one of the young men and said, Go and kill this man. And so he hit him and he died. David said to him, I suppose he said to the dead body, Your blood be on your head. If your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. Now, that's a big lesson. It might seem a rather extreme punishment, but it's a big lesson for us that really, if we imagine that we've done something and act like we have, well, that's how we will be judged. Which means that we shouldn't tell lies. We shouldn't tell lies indeed. David lamented with a great lamentation over Saul and Jonathan, his son. And he said that it should be taught to the people of Judah, and it's written in the book of Jashar. And the lament goes like this. Your glory, O Israel, is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. That's where the Philistines live. Don't publish it in the streets of Ashkelon. Well, isn't Gath where Goliath came from? That's right. Tell it not in Gath, publish it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, and the daughters of the uncircumcised have a party. O oh, you hills of Gilboa, may there be no dew or rain on you, <clears throat> nor fields and offerings. For there the shield of the mighty was thrown away, the shield of Saul, as if he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the dead, from the fat of the mighty ones, the bow of Jonathan didn't turn back. The sword of Saul did not come back empty. Saul and Jonathan were beloved and lovely in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. You daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you in such scarlet clothes, who put ornaments of gold on your clothing. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? Jonathan, you lie slain on your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You were very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? So that really shows how David really did love his enemies. He really was a great example of this. And so when they died, when Saul died, he was really, really sad. And he didn't rejoice when his enemy fell. But it just shows that he really did have love in his heart for Saul, even though he got cranky about him sometimes in the Psalms, understandably. And that's really a great example for us.